Hey, I'm Dave and I'm with Air Spool and today is the final day of how to install a solar powered air conditioner. Up to this point, you should have your Air Spool unit running off of alternating current. Those are the videos we've made so far. By the way, subscribe to Air Spool, our YouTube channel, and there you'll find those previous videos along with some other information on solar powered air conditioning. So, in terms of installing solar panels, the first question people have as a DIYer is, where do I get my solar panels? And up to this point, the best two sources we have found are either Alt-E Store, A-L-T-E-S-T-O-R-E.com, and that's if you need them shipped. The other source, CED Green Tech, they have over 80 locations in the United States, and so in that case, if you can pick them up with a truck, or in our case, a 2007 Honda Odyssey minivan, go pick them up and you'll save a little bit on shipping that way. Uh, Aldi Store, dearly departed Amy Baudet has made some great videos of how to install panels, so check out that, check out her videos as well. But I'll give you a kind of a reference of specifically how to do them for what we're working on here for this air spool solar powered air conditioner. So we need in general, we say 1500 watts of solar. That's if we are, you see me sweating here, we're in downtown Las Vegas, it's humid, it happens to be 98 degrees still, so in these peak condition days, you need, you need like 1500 watts. Why? Because you lose some of the efficiency of the panels. Those panels are probably 140 degrees right now up on this roof, and so you lose about 15% or something from that, and then the compressor of air conditioners become less efficient in the summer as well. So uh, better to over panel a little bit. In the spring and fall, you won't have any problems with if you just had a thousand watts, but since panels are relatively cheap, we recommend 1500 watts, okay? So check out those two uh, sources. We also have, these, these four panels right here are Hanwha 380 watt Q cells. The, the three beyond there, we actually stock those. Those are working really well. Those are monsters. Those are 550 watt Blue Sun solar panels. So if you happen to be in Vegas, you can uh, get with us to pick some of those bad boys up, okay? So the next question is, people ask is, how, how tilted should the panels be for peak efficiency? And in our case, since we're primarily focused on air conditioning, this is a heat pump but it will do heat, but primarily, at least here in Vegas, we're focused on air conditioning. So the rule of thumb, we're at the 36th longitudinal line here. And so if you wanted to kind of have, have your panels be peaked out for the whole year, you want to be at about a 36 degree angle. These are obviously not at a 36 degree angle. They're more at maybe a five or 10 degree angle, which is actually, it's wonderful for the summer, okay? So the rule of thumb is take your, wherever you're at, 36 minus 15, so we should be at more like uh, 20 degrees if we want to be peaked for summer. If you want to be peaked more for winter for using this as a heat pump, then take wherever your longitudinal area is and add 15 degrees to that. So we'd be at, if we want more for heat, we'd be at 36 plus 15, we'd be at 51 degree angle, okay? But anyway, it, it doesn't matter that much, actually. What does matter is that they're on the south side. So these panels are on the south side. Southwest is okay if you want to have more cooling in the late afternoon. Southeast for more in the morning. But don't put the panels on the north side. You can, but you're going to need more panels. So, and the goal, our goal right now is to run this air conditioner with the least amount of panel as needed. Okay, so how do you actually install the panels? These are called rails. This rail is from Iron Ridge, okay? A few companies make these. This Iron Ridge, we like them, they're easy. Um, they, it's super hot, so I'm not gonna hold on to it too much, but these rails are 14 foot. So you also, of course, you have to do the math and figure out how many of my panels can fit in this case, um, portrait-wise. Uh, on 14 foot rails. We could fit four of these smaller panels on 14 foot rails. We only fit three of the larger panels on the 14 foot rails. Do the math and whatever 
whatever your width of your panels are, add a, um, about an inch and a half for the bolts in the middle, which we'll be talking to uh, momentarily, and keep a couple extra inches on each end uh, for bolting at the end. You don't want to go right down to the to the wire here in terms of how long your uh, rails are. Okay, so in terms of mounting these rails, first thing you need to do is you need to find your roof joists. Roof joists are 16 or 24 inches apart so look in your attic or wherever however you can see actually for houses they usually will run perpendicular to the to the back of your home or whatever so you can see that if they're 16 or or 24 inches so once you can lo locate one if you have a measuring tape you can just use that tape and figure out where you should be to hit the joist to screw your um, L bracket on and all these all of the, they all work the same this Iron Ridge one works the same as other brands um, it's putting a leg bolt uh, through this part of the L bracket an L bracket might come in different shapes variations but it's an L bracket basically and put put a leg bolt through there into your roof joist you can put flashing uh, this asphalt shingle roof is probably as simple as install you can put flashing underneath this. Um, when we did this, or when this was done, you can see that the flashing did not come underneath this asphalt shingle either here or here. All right, it should have on this side. I can see why they didn't on this side. It's a little bit hard, but at any rate, the water is hitting the flashing for both these, and it's not just hitting the L bracket. Now, here in Las Vegas, would we really need to do this with this much slope in the roof? Hard to say. I mean, remember, our, uh, we're, we're putting the um, leg bolt right through here, put some silicon in the hole as you're drilling it, and then it's the, the bolt is abutted right against that roof joist, so the water is not going into the end of the space. It would be hitting the roof joist, but... Uh, as an added precaution, you probably want to put that flashing on there, okay? Um, and so the way, so with this L bracket, you're first going to put... Fire! Fire! <laughs> um, there's, there are many fires down here in the, in the hood. Um, so... This, this is going to go in first. You need to make sure you're hitting the roof joist because if you're missing it, uh, winds are going to take away your solar panels and maybe part of your roof. You don't want that to happen. So uh, make sure that you're hitting wood and not just shingle uh, or, or plywood or whatever. You want to hit the good part of the roof joist. And then uh, you have this, this bolt right here. This connects. Now you'll notice that this is diamond shaped. And so it's very convenient to get through here and on here. So you can be anywhere it slides to wherever you want it to be. So that's very convenient. So that's going to be bolted on. And once, once you have your two rails in place, in this case the two rails, by the way, how far apart should the rails be? Well, that's going to be mandated quite heavily by how far apart your roof joists are, right? But you want it to be something like this. So you don't want it to be one-third, one-third, one-third. On the other hand, you don't want these right at the end because your solar panels will bow, okay? So something about like the way we have it here, these are smaller panels, so we're, we're pretty safe with the amount of space we have, have here. Um, but once you have your two rails set up and, they're, and they're, the leg bolts and L brackets are on there and you got the, uh, got the rails bolted on, then in this case, in Iron Ridge's case, they have something called a UFO. And so again, this is diamond shaped. Put it in, you twist it. When you screw it in, and you're going to need one of these. Okay, a 3 8 and a 7 8 7 16. Uh, sorry, 7 16. So make sure you have those two sizes. And then this UFO, it's neat because it actually, the UFO is neat, it holds both panels at the same time. You see this one's slipped a little bit probably over uh, in one of the windstorms. It seems pretty, pretty tight in there now, but yeah, it holds both on there. And so as you tighten it, 
this diamond shape that clamps on, you'll see it's a little bit, a little bit rough there. And so it clamps on really well as long as these are nice and tight. So at the end, it's a little tricky. This is pretty brainless, but this is something you have to be very careful of. You have to do this based on the size of your solar panel, okay? So this, for instance, this one right here, 32 millimeters. All right, so you have to make sure that this um, end bracket here is correct for, and all, you search Iron Ridge's website or Alt E's website and you'll, you'll see these, but make sure that it's the same size as your solar panel because it's, if it's not, it's not gonna hold it. This, this uh, bolt right here is just gonna be flailing around and it needs to be a nice, tight, secure fit. So uh, once, once everything is put on well here, then it's going to be time to come up with this ground lug. So ground your panels in case of a lightning storm. All right, so that should be tied into your common ground for your home or wherever, however you're grounding, tie it into that same uh, ground bus. And in this case, we have it tied in over here. Um, so that you can actually turn Okay, so this is what this looks like inside so you'll see that the ground uh, coming uh, coming from the solar array uh, is uh, ties back into the into the building ground so um, on tile roofs, it's a little bit different, a little bit more complicated because you need to push the tile out of the way and the L bracket's a little bit different shape, but same concept. You want to tie into the roof joists. Metal roofs, a little bit different too, depending on how you're fastening the metal roofs. There's a few videos floating around YouTube on how to do that, but for the, for the sake of this video, since we have a asphalt shingle roof here and since they're pretty pervasive throughout the United States, uh, here in Vegas, probably mostly tile roof, but we have an asphalt roof here, so hopefully this is useful to it to you. Um, comment on it, and again, uh, subscribe to Air School for the rest of our videos. Thank you.